Right guys, we have just had a hectic weekend of Championship football. We're here today to discuss all of the drama. Obviously, we still have a game going on in the Championship tonight. Very much looking forward to tuning in for Birmingham against Leicester. But for the other 11 games we've had going on this weekend, we're going to be digesting all of the action. And as always, we want to hear from you guys in the comments down below. 300 likes on today's video would be massively appreciated. But without any further ado, Let's jump in. Raving Engineer says Ipswich's results day was disappointing, as I think it was clear who were the better side, but good work rate from everyone. Whatever happens, Ipswich will be second going into the January transfer window. I think everyone would have taken that going into November. Yeah, real bonkers game to start out the weekend. A two-all draw in the East Anglian derby between Ipswich and Norwich. And do you know what? Fair play to Norwich, because I wasn't giving much of a chance to them coming into this game. I just thought that that Ipswich front line would have too much firepower for for them, they create too many chances, and that Norwich back line would just be too vulnerable. And while a couple of those elements were true, and Ipswich definitely had enough chances to put this game to bed, Norwich had an ace up their sleeve in Johnny Rowe, and I mean, yeah, a couple of really well taken goals from him, and credit to the mentality of that Norwich side as well, I think it would have been very easy for them to have shrunk back into their shells when Ipswich took the lead. You know, they were knocking on the door quite a bit before they got that um, opening goal. And we have seen a few occasions this season where Norwich have conceded first and they've almost surrendered almost. Ipswich did go agonisingly close a few times with shots just going wide of the post from really good positions and on another day could have easily won this game. But credit to Norwich for hanging in there. And like I say, when you've got a the quality of someone like a Johnny Rowe to pop up with those moments. And anything is possible, and for the time being, Norwich still maintain that really good record in recent history against Ipswich, obviously. Still Ipswich who have the bragging rights in terms of the league table right now, but from how ugly that result potentially could have been for Norwich with the overall form book coming into this fixture, I think they'll be happy to take a point from that game. On the back of their loss against Bristol City, this Sunderland fan says disappointed after the last couple of results, but not surprised the most Sunderland thing ever. Yeah, was starting to feel a bit better about Sunderland on the back of two really good back-to-back uh, -back wins. They come into this game against Bristol City as the favourites, give away a really cheap goal, to be honest, a mistake in playing out from the back, concede the penalty, and then despite knocking on the door for a lot of that game can't have the quality to get anything over the line fair play to Bristol City and how they dug in defensively to shut Sunderland out Max O'Leary on top form for the home side in this game but it has been a reoccurring pattern with Sunderland throughout this season to get into some really good areas but not have that killer instinct to finish sides off so far this season they have been the fourth most wasteful side in the championship and I mean more of that was on show in this game 18 shots nine on target but not not having that killer quality to get back into this game after giving away what was a pretty cheap goal. Steven, who's a Hull fan, says all-round great team performance. When they click like that, they're a great watch. Completely agree. Some of the best football that Hull have played all season. A commanding 3-0 win over Cardiff in this one and a richly deserved three points. To say that was one of their best performances of the season so far, without Jaden Villagin as well, is quite promising for Rossini going forward that they maybe aren't as reliant on him conjuring up a moment of magic or so when they have all these contributors from um, across the forward line really good result for them in a league that has been pretty inconsistent below the top four or so sides Hull have started to pick up a bit of momentum recently with back-to-back -back wins there and definitely took advantage of a Cardiff side who have been out of sorts recently that's now five of their last eight matches they failed to hit the back of the net no denying they're in quite a bit of a rut right now in the instance of Cardiff it does seem as if those first couple of months of the season which were really quite promising have masked over what's been a pretty average last month or so for them where there has been an obvious drop off in form. Louis who's a Coventry fan says brilliant game from us, Robin's masterclass, thought Thomas and Kitchen were the standouts, we set out to shut Leeds down and it worked, massive point for us and something to build upon, yeah just one defeat now from Coventry's last seven matches, thought that this trip to Ellen Road may be 
one stretch too far for them with how good Leeds have been at home so far this season and the bounce back ability that Leeds have often shown throughout the season but wasn't the case in this one and I think from a Leeds perspective we'll definitely look at this game as a bit of a missed opportunity having taken the lead in this one having the majority of the ball and the chances and especially on a weekend where Ipswich have also dropped points it was a rare opportunity where they could have gained a little bit of ground on them in the race for the top two but Coventry approached this in really quite a pragmatic when I think that's been the case with Coventry throughout this decent run of fixtures that they've had recently. The start of the season was all very unpredictable, a bit wishy-washy, introducing a lot of players. It wasn't quite sticking for them. Since the system change and going back to four at the back, they've been a lot more sturdy at the back and taking a point away from Leeds at Ellen Road. I don't think many sides will do that this season. So really solid point on the board there for Coventry, who are gradually climbing the championship table right now for Leeds no doubt that'll be a frustrating one it was heartbreak for Millwall over the weekend to be the better side all game and throw it away like that well it just screams Millwall doesn't it yeah a real gut-wrenching one for them to concede a 97th minute penalty against Huddersfield having got themselves into a really good position honestly the point doesn't do a great deal for either of these two sides they were probably aided by the fact that QPR lost over the weekend but Sheffield Wednesday gaining a bit of ground on both of them and I mean on the run of the form that both Huddersfield and Millwall have been on recently they are both looking like relegation candidates for Huddersfield who will definitely take a point from this fixture having got back into it so late winning matches has been a real problem for them it's just two wins from their last 15 championship matches and it's not much better for Millwall either who've only got two wins from their last 13 games and with the upturn in form that we have seen from QPR and Chef Wednesday under their new managers I think both fan bases quite rightly have that feeling to be quite concerned at this stage. I still feel like in the example of Millwall especially, there is a lot more to that squad than we're currently seeing. I don't think a side goes from missing out on the top six by one point last season to what's been served up so far, but not hanging on in key matches like this against relegation rivals will come back to bite you come the end of the season. It was a big win for Plymouth over the weekend, 3-2 against Rotherham. Really good back and forth game between both sides we spoke about how important Plymouth's home form was going to be to put a bit of distance between themselves and the bottom three with how dodgy they've been on the road so far but managed to get it done late on in this game and they've now put a six point cushion between themselves and the bottom three standout performers in this one for Plymouth look to be Finnezaz and Morgan Whitaker who obviously came up with the last minute winner some really nice patterns of play from Plymouth in the final third and a nice link up between the midfield and attack as well but another real of a result for Rotherham with Sheffield Wednesday winning this weekend it does leave them rooted to the bottom of the championship right now and just to put into perspective how drastic the drop-off has been from the Millers this season last season Rotherham accumulated 50 points in the championship for Rotherham to go ahead and match that same points tally this season in their remaining 24 championship matches they'd need to average 1.54 points per game which is playoff form I don't think anyone can see that happening and their survival chances as things stand are looking pretty grim. Watford took their anger out on Preston after the Ipswich defeat. Honestly, this was one of the most bizarre football matches I've ever been to. The first half, it was a real battle between both sides, an end-to-end -end game of football where it could have been 3-3 after the first half alone. Preston starting to open up the pitch a little bit more. Liam Miller looking really promising as a creative outlet down that left-hand side, but real credit to Ben Hamer absolutely excellent it was only for a bit of an ingenuitive finish from Will Keane that managed to get past him and obviously Watford then level things up but the second half is just a completely different story for Preston to have kickoff and to have conceded within 10 seconds of that restart in the second half was absolutely criminal we were like flies to a lie all crowding to try and get around the ball Watford catches out with one ball over the top and from that point onwards we absolutely capitulate now not taking anything away from Watford because they took their goals in the second half absolutely brilliantly I thought their spine was really strong in this game as well especially the likes of Kiembe, Kony and Bayo I thought were all excellent but come full time Deepdale was a massively depressing place to be if I'm being completely honest the ground was 
almost completely empty other than the away end. And this dismal run of form that Preston have been on recently has to be discussed. It's now just three wins from our last 15 matches, which is relegation form. And it does feel like we are in a massively false position right now because of those results we strung together at the start of the season. I feel like a lot of the fan base is now completely checked out with Ryan Lowe, if I'm honest. I have the feeling that the club's going to give him the benefit of the doubt because of the league position we find ourselves in. But honestly... Lowe's been in the job for two years now and it just feels like Groundhog Day where we get ourselves into these situations with these bad runs of form. We had the same last season as well and we will pick up the odd result here or there because I do think we've got more quality in the squad than is currently being shown. But tactically, we've looked miles off the pace this season and this just doesn't look like a cohesive championship squad right now and I'm absolutely baffled that we still sit in the top half of the table it's crazy to me full credit to Watford though took their goals very well and yeah definitely heading in the right direction under Ishmael Liam who's a Sheffield Wednesday fan says Miracle 2.0 is well and truly on what a result it was for Sheffield Wednesday the late turnaround against QPR and does keep their survival hopes alive had they lost this game it would have been a real mountain to climb to even just bridge that gap between themselves and QPR never mind the teams above them that are currently out of the relegation zone but fair play to Danny Roll for the tune he's got out of the Sheffield Wednesday squad of late because this game wasn't going to be easy with the bounce that QPR had been on recently but just to put into perspective what a good job Roll has done with the Sheffield Wednesday squad so far in the job he's been averaging 1.18 points per game which if projected over an entire season would be worth 54 points which is solid lower half mid table considering he was walking into a squad which looked dead and buried and with no real championship quality that's a remarkable turnaround now if Sheffield Wednesday were to average 1.18 points per game between now and the end of the season they'd finish the campaign with 44 points and that really would go down to the wire whether or not that would be enough for survival last season it wouldn't have been enough for survival the season before it would have been they carry on plugging away going about getting results like they have done in the fashion like here against QPR then who knows they will stand the fighting chance Christian, who's a Southampton fan, says finally a convincing win. Our best performance of this season so far. Completely dominated Blackburn. Yeah, it was good stuff from Southampton in this game. Running out as 4-0 winners in the end. Russell Martin men just love a late goal or two, don't they? Two more goals in this game that came past the 90-minute mark. Only real blip in this whole performance was that pretty embarrassing penalty miss by Alcaraz. But other than that, a really good showing from Russell Martin's men. Yes, the red card helped. The fact they played the majority of that second half again against the 10 men of Blackburn Rovers but regardless they made pretty light work of John Dahl Thomason's men in this game and looking at their upcoming fixtures I wouldn't back against this unbeaten run stretching into the new year five of Southampton's next six matches are all against bottom half opposition and with Ipswich and Leeds both dropping points this weekend it was pretty much the perfect weekend of football for Southampton not the best from Rovers thought they'd be a little bit more competitive in this game but obviously the red card in the second half didn't help things Good to see Borough end this latest points drought. Ironically, we didn't play as well as we did in the loss to Hull, but I'll take the points in the easier games over Christmas. Yeah, good result for Middlesbrough there, coming off the back of a really turgid run recently, having lost through on the bounce coming into this one. Really bizarre goal, which ends up winning the game for Borough from an indirect free kick, but when you've been on a bit of a dodgy run, you take every goal however it comes about. And Swansea right now just can't find much momentum themselves. It's just two wins from their last 11 matches. Is. Definitely think they need to take advantage of coming up against a badly out of form Preston side uh, next up. I don't think that either fan base seems particularly confident going into that game right now. For Middlesbrough, it is a tough game. They've got coming up next against West Brom, but after that, they have games against Rotherham and Huddersfield. A decent opportunity there, you'd think, to string together some wins. And like I said, coming off the back of the results that Middlesbrough have had recently, you take a win however it comes about. And then to round off the weekend, we had West Brom playing at a one all draw with Stoke. Think every Stoke fan will take that point on the road there. Bit of a freak goal in the end by Lyndon Gooch, a looping cross coming in, which manages to deceive Alex Palmer. Brandon Thomas Asante gets the home side back into it and despite some endeavour to go on and win this game, it uh, just wasn't quite happening from the home side. It does mean that Stoke's winless run continues, only Rotherham are 
on a longer winless run than Stoke are at this point. Eight games without a win, but back-to-back -back draws with Gallagher in the dugout. I think that Stoke fans will take that and then hoping they've got their new boss installed by the time these next couple of matches roll around where they've got games against Millwall and Birmingham, both of which very winnable for Stoke. Because they will still be nervously looking over their shoulder with it being just a three-point difference between themselves and the bottom three right now. But guys, there we have it. That will now wrap it up for today's video. If you did go into enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Obviously, we do have another game going on in the championship tonight as well. And the fixtures are going to continue to come thick and fast over this festive period. Other than that though, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Drop a like if you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one.